Hello booktube, I'm Heather and this is Recently Seen Reading. I am at the halfway point. I'm at the halfway point of my No Bora month. So every half a year or so I do a No Bora. And this is to kind of keep myself in check a little bit because I have a habit of borrowing lots and lots of books and reading lots of them, but not reading all of them. And sometimes this gets out of hand largely because um, I can get term loans still, so that means I can have a book on my shelf that I've borrowed from the library for a year or more. And, yeah, that's not great. If I want to borrow the book, I should maybe either read it or return it. So I recently hit a total of 36 books on my borrowed shelf. That's the shelf there. So I had a combination of ebooks, audiobooks, and print books. And the grand total was 36 when I started, and today I'm down to 27 unread, and I'm pretty pleased with that progress. I've got one that I'll probably be able to finish tonight, and another that maybe this week I'll finish. It's a daft project, I admit it, but it keeps me from being totally squirrely. And besides that, it's really helpful in sharpening my discernment about what I'm borrowing, why I'm borrowing it, what I say I want to read is expressed through my borrowing, and what I actually want to, to read is expressed by what I actually do read. And at the halfway point, I'm usually a little bit twitchy because I want books that I can't have unless I break my promise to myself, and I can always do that, of course. And it's an interesting point of frustration to cross. So I'm at the halfway point, um, and I'm pleased with where I've gotten so far. I've read books that are, I would describe as okay, not um, books that are the best books I've read in the year, not books that I particularly recommend to people, but books I wanted to finish. Um, I have one DNF, a book that turned out to be um, a bit of nonfiction that was more rooted in interpretation of uh, literature through a psychoanalytic approach and it just rubbed me the wrong way and I thought, I don't need to finish it. So it's, it's going back. Let me just check my list to see what I actually did read. Oh yes, the side effect of not being able to borrow books is that uh, the books I already own become attractive. Not as attractive as I want them to be, but they do become attractive and so I've read two. One was um, Helen Humphrey's Machine Without Horses. This is an okay novel. It's kind of metafiction-ish. Humphreys is a Canadian writer. She lives in Ontario on the Great Lakes. And um, Machine Without Horses is um, broken into two halves. The first half is um, told in the first person with a, a writer character. This is generally interpreted as Helen Humphrey speaking in her own voice about the process of turning what she knows from an obituary about Megan Boyd, a world famous um, fly tire from Scotland, into a novel. So the first half of the, of the, the book talks about the process, that the author, the fictional author, who is probably Helen Humphreys, but maybe not, goes through to learn how to tie ties, just to understand the physical mechanics of it, and the, the way she struggles to find how you would develop a story with an overarching plot when so little is known about Boyd. And Boyd is attractive to Humphreys as a character because um, Boyd was unconventional, non-conforming to any kind of um, gender or social norms she loved country folk dancing, she lived by herself in a small cottage, she tied flies um, for 30 years or 40 years before she lost her sight, she tied flies for um, the royal family, and was incredibly skilled, but she also refused um, social norms and gender norms. She dressed in um, men's clothing, uh, jackets and shirts and ties and all of that. And so in the second half of the novel, or the book, it's hard to know what to call it. Um, Humphreys reworks Boyd's story into a fictional story and renames the character and imagines for her life as um, a woman living on her own, tying flies with a 
short-lived but intense romance and with a with a woman and longer lived happier friendships with um, the men around her so interesting book um, not the best book of the rear here for me I, by any means but you know competent interesting not fabulous though the other one I read um, was another Natalia Natalia Ginsburg family lexicon I'm reading this as part of um, the reading group that Sarah from hardcover Hearts organizes, and this is um, a memoir basically, and tells the story of Ginsburg's family from the time she was a child till about, mm, I'd say, 1950-ish, at the point when she remarries. Um, Ginsburg is really good at evoking um, the aftermath of intense experiences, so the aftermath of living through a war, what, what, what that feeling is like she's very good at that so I'd recommend it for that reason alone and if you're reading a Ginsburg novel especially the ones in the oh written in the late 40s early 50s it's a useful kind of crib book in a way in that many of the characters in her novels can be traced back to family friends or members of her family you can see that pattern really clearly in family lexicon so glad to get that one read. Now, in terms of borrowed books, I think a couple of these were ebooks, so not so many gaps in my shelf as I'd like. I read Nikki French's um, latest thriller. Um, has anyone seen Charlotte Salter? Salter. This is a competent but pretty basic mystery and thriller set in two time periods um, involving a family group where a mother disappears. There's nothing particularly exciting about the book. It was a competent mystery or thriller. Lots of plot. Um, some of the characters are drawn in an interesting way, but other than that, pretty generic mystery. And that's one of the things I find missing from my reading diet when I go on a no borrow. I tend not to have um, purchased mysteries or thrillers on my shelves. I just don't tend to buy them because I read them kind of in big gulps from the library and that's what I get a little edgy about missing at this time in a no borrow month. I also finished up in ebook format Jasmine Ward's Let Us Descend which came out last fall. I think I might be in the minority here in, in not um, finding this particularly good book. And it's not a bad book but it's not as thrilling as some of the for me, uh, for some of the reviews that I've seen or read. So it, it, it's a, a novel that tells the story of Annis as she travels from the Carolinas, probably in South Carolina, south to Louisiana in about 1850, 1840. Annis is a slave and is ultimately sold off the plantation and goes through the slave markets in New Orleans. So it has, I think, two registers as a novel. Um, one, the register of absolute horror because it's it's very vivid and this part of it is actually well done. Very vivid in the horrific detail of things like coffles and the walking from you know, North Carolina to, to Louisiana and just the horrors of that and the physical difficulty of that. I think that's for the large part well done then it has a second register, which is kind of a mystic or a supernatural register, when Annis is in contact with various um, spirits or supernatural type um, beings or feelings that keep her connected to her, her mother and her grandmother and potentially great-grandmothers, women from Dahomey originally. I didn't find that as compelling or as interesting, and I think on a whole, I think the writing is uneven. Um, there are places where there's just, I found, puzzling and odd word choices. So for example, in, a, in one sentence, or a sentence and a half, two sentences, word will go from call, talking about um, women stepping onto a skiff, and then onto a boat, and then onto a wharf, and it's all stepping onto the same object. Not a wharf, a raft. But a skiff, a boat, and a raft are three different floating objects 
and there's lots of little places in, in the text where I found word choices were just off in a way that didn't make sense um, as a contribution to the way Ward is telling the story. So on the whole, not a book for me, not as strong a novel as I've seen lots of other people say it is for me. I think in general Ward may not be a writer that I gel with. Your marriage may vary, of course. What else is going on? Um, I think that's all I finished since the last update. Four, yes. And I'm in the midst of a couple. Um, I've got, it's just off screen here. Let me just grab it for you. This one, Forbidden Notebook by Alba de Cespedes, who's from the same generation roughly as, as Ginsburg, which is why I picked it up. Um, I nearly finished it. Unsure what I think about it yet. I'm gonna wait till I see how it all resolves. Um, I'm reading a book by Denise Gigante called uh, B Book Man, Book Madness. It's over here too. It's not, not much to look at, right? It's just a, your standard academic hardbound. Um, this one I'm probably going to shift to reading. Um, it's selectively. It's much less compelling a read as um, Daisy Hill's book on Joseph Johnson, which I read a couple months ago. Um, Gigante's writing is uh, is stiff, and she has odd habits in how she uses parenthetical statements to explain things. She overexplains in some places, I think, and she she's clearly trying to write to it. Um, an ordinary reader. She refers to the, the characters in the book, actual having once lived human beings, as protagonists. And she has this long list of protagonists, but they don't behave in protagonistic ways. She's using the language of fiction, but her prose doesn't carry it off. It's a book about the dispersal of Charles Lamb's library in North America after his death and his sister's death. The book's um, traveled the Atlantic and then were dispersed. It wasn't a huge collection, but it was um, an interesting collection of very battered books with lots of um, notes and marginalia from Coleridge and Wordsworth and uh, Lamb himself in them. So bibliographically and print history wise, interesting material, but I don't know that I'm going to read it much more deeply. It's gotten kind of dull. Um, other than that, I'm working through, I've just started, Paul Marshall's Brown Girls, Brown Stones, uh, a first novel set in New York um, about Barbadian immigrants to New York in the, the, the 40s and 50s, I think. So that's it for my the halfway mark update. Down 36 books to 28 books, and we're not going to talk about the 13 books or 14 books I bought at the local book sale last weekend. A weekend I twitched about because it was raining and raining and raining, but it stopped long enough for me to trudge up to the book sale and buy myself 13 books at $2 a piece. I have lots of books. Did I buy mystery books? No, because why would I do something as practical as that? No. I snapped up every green spine virago I could spot. Oh, so foolish and so daft. I hope you're not so foolish or so daft and that you're having a great reading week. Bye-bye.